So you're just out of hospital placement and you feel lost, you feel confused and out of your depth. Nine weeks ago, this was me. And this is the guy that I wish I had at the time. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this little corner of the internet. I really hope that you're doing well. If you follow me on here, you probably know that I'm a third year medical student in the UK and that I've just recently started hospital placements. Transitioning to hospital placements is a very big step in a medical student's life. It's very daunting, it's very scary, you feel completely lost and confused. And so this is the guy that I wish I had nine weeks ago when I started my first medical placement in acute medicine. So for doing this, we're gonna be covering three different areas. The first one is gonna be what should you bring to placement? The second thing is what should you do during the placement? And the third thing is I think probably the most important one is the mindset. What mindset should you have when you're going into placement? And as always, you're gonna have timestamps down below so you can jump around as you please and save yourself some time. Okay, so let's start with the first section, which is what should you bring to placement? I'm gonna order these in order of importance. Again, it's very subjective to me. So the first thing I think you should bring to placement is a black pen. If you are a UK medical student, all notes, if they're not on the computer, are written and they're written in black ink only. So if you don't have a black pen, it's very difficult to write anything. You really can't participate that much. If people ask you to write in notes, you just can't do that. So a black pen is definitely the way to go. I really love the Muji black pen inks. It's the gel point ones, I think 0.5. I really, really love them. I only write with Muji pens now. I love them. The second thing obviously is a stethoscope. You, if you don't have a stethoscope, you can't examine patients, you can't learn, you can't hear aortic stenosis murmurs and mitral valve regurgitation murmurs and like crackles in the lungs. So please bring a stethoscope, buy one. The, they're a bit pricey, but obviously it's an investment. You can keep it for years and years and years. Uh, a lot of us buy the Litman ones. I have just the classic one in brown. It's I engraved it with my name, so it's very cute. Yeah, I really like it. I love just putting it around my neck. I feel very, feel very medical like, you know, I feel like I know what I'm doing when I have it around my neck. It just gives me a bit more confidence, I guess. But yeah, I'm gonna take it off now. The third thing that I think is important that might be medical school to medical school dependent is to bring your iPad or whatever you need to get your sign offs with during your placement. Our medical school gives us an iPad, so definitely bring it with you because if you don't have it you can't really get your sign offs obviously you can do it on a phone but it's not as professional it's a tiny little screen whereas this one is much bigger just bring it with you you need it also there's a bunch of apps on here that you can put where you can you know look at the bnf look at some medical flashcards or anything any questions that you have you can just quickly get the ipad out to have the little answer that you're looking for because if you get your phone out people might think that you're on instagram or texting your friend and it looks a little bit less professional. The fourth thing that for me is really important to bring is a watch. Obviously, when you work in clinical practice, you need to be barreled below the elbows with nothing. So all of these rings and my, my watch and my bracelet needs to go. So there's no way for me to know the time. So the thing that I bought is I think called a nurse watch. And basically I have my student badge on here. I put it on my scrubs and then I attached my nurse watch on it. So I basically have the time with me because I love knowing what time it is. You know, if it's lunchtime, I need to tell the doctor, hey, it's lunchtime, like, can I go? Whatever it is, even if you're during the heart rate, you need to like know what how long 15 or 30 seconds is. So having a nurse watch with you is really, really good. I would definitely recommend having one. I know that if you have like a Apple watch as well, they have attachments like this that exist, I think on Amazon, and you can just like put your little, your Apple watch on there and have the time as well, which could, also be quite useful. The fifth thing that I have with me is a little sketchbook. These are just a WH Smith A6 sketch pad. And basically, if you have like anything that you need to jot down quickly and you don't, you know, wanna get the iPad out or you don't have your iPad or whatever it is, it's always nice to have a little sketchbook where you can just write, I often write to-do lists on there or little like things that doctors tell me to look over. So I just always have this with me in my little pockets of my scrubs. Um, so I always have something to write on because it's always a bit awkward if you're on placement and a doctor's like remember this And then you just don't have anything to write on or you have to ask for a sheet of paper or whatever it is Just come prepared come with this and then the last thing of the section is more outfit related So if you're in a medical school that doesn't provide scrubs like mine, you probably need to start thinking before placement starts what smart and formal clothes you're going to be needing to buy because I honestly think that feeling comfortable and confident in your clothes definitely 
shows and portrays and how you hold yourself so make sure you're with clothes that you're comfortable with that follow the dress code so they'll bear below the elbows not too flowy so it's not touching the patient in any way um, and things like that so think about these things and also think about what shoes you're going to wear hospitals are massive the other day i walked 10 kilometers during the day and that was just in hospital that's how big hospitals are you're walking from one end to the other all the time so make sure your shoes are comfortable invest in nice comfortable shoes that would definitely be a piece of advice that i think is quite important now let's move on to the second section of this video which is what should you do during your placement. So now that you have acquired everything you need, what should you actually be doing? Like, what are the tips that I have for during the actual placement? So these are not in no particular order, but the first thing that I think is really important is that you have to build rapport with the team that you're working with, right? The team is made of like senior doctors, so like consultants and senior registrars, and then registrars and foundation doctors or junior doctors, and then nurses and physiotherapists and speech therapists and social workers and medical students or any students in healthcare. And so I think it's really important when you get into a team to introduce yourself and say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a third year medical student attached to this ward this week or today. Do you know if there's anything I can do? I think it's quite good because it builds good rapport with the team. They know who you are, then they know that to expect you. If there's cool things that they want to teach you, they're going to know who to look for. They know what you look like. And also it's basic manners. You know what I mean? A lot of the times you see medical students that don't introduce themselves, don't say hello, they just get on with their work. But then, you know, the, the team can't be on your side and can't really help you that much if you're not showing, hey, I'm here and this is who I am. This is my role in the team. You know what I mean? Just introduce yourself, it's good. The second thing that I think you should be doing during a placement is to arrive on your placement with a clear plan in place of what you want to get done. So if you're coming in for the morning, if you're coming in only in the afternoon, or if you're coming in for the whole day, know exactly today, these are all the tasks I wanna get done. And then also organize the tasks in between things that you can do on your own, that's only dependent on you, and things that are also dependent on doctors. So for example, if your goal is to talk to two patients, take two patient histories, and get a physical examination done, you have two things that you can do on your own, right? You can go to the patient, ask them if they're okay and comfortable with you taking a history from them and then writing that in um, wherever you need to write it in for us it's in the ipad send that off to the uni and then that's done and that's there's no input from anybody else it's only something that's dependent on you but with a physical examination you need somebody else like a doctor to sign you off and say yes they've done a physical examination and yes they've done it well or they've done it not well like these are the things to improve these are the things that were good right so it's important to identify what is dependent on you and what has other people involved so it means that when you arrive to placement you can directly immediately gauge hey in this room, the doctor's office, there's a junior doctor that seems quite free right now. They don't seem like they have that much on. I might just go up to them and be like, hey, like my name is whatever. I would like today to do a physical examination. Is it possible to do it now or would you prefer to do it later? And then they might be like, oh, it's possible to do it now. Go see so-and-so patient um, and come back with your findings, something like that. But alternatively, if you see that people are super, super busy, you can be like, hey, I'm just gonna do my own thing this morning, talk to the patients I need to talk to, come back this afternoon and see if there's a doctor that's a bit more free so I can talk to them about a f doing a physical examination. You know what I mean? So it's, if, it's only if you know in your head before going to placement what you need to do that you are actually gonna get these things done. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna be able to spot opportunities really, really quickly. The third thing that I think is important to do on placement is to offer help. Obviously, if you've just started out and you can clearly can't do that much, like you can't take bloods, you can't put a cannula in, you can't really do anything then you can't really offer that much help. But the more you become you know, competent with blood, you could go up to the team and be like, hey, I'm noticing that you're a bit busy right now. Is there anything that I can do to help you? And they might be like, oh, actually, yes. Can you like take blood from this patient? Or can you get the material organized for me to go take blood? You know what I mean? And like the more you offer help to people, the more they'll be likely to then help you. You know, these people you need to understand are very busy. They're busier than we are as students. And so if you offer them help, they're gonna be like, hey, they've helped me. I, I probably should give back a little bit as well and ask what they need to get done. So sometimes that's also a way to get things done and also just build more rapport, have a better relationship with people. And it's always nice to offer help. It's also helping you because you're building skills, you're learning new things, gaining more independence on the wards and things like that. The fourth thing that I think is important is to be proactive. Again, that kind of goes in with the second point, which is to come in with a plan. But 
opportunities will not come to you. Doctors will more often than not not come to you with things and tell you what to do. You need to go up to them. You need to be proactive. You need to be, hey, uh, doctor so-and-so, is it possible for me to do this today? Or, hey, like, I'm struggling with finding a patient to talk to. Do you know any good patients that I can talk to? You know, you need to ask questions. You need to go up to them because things will more often than not not come to you. The hospital system is so busy that students, if you don't make your way in, it's quite rare that people are gonna like come and hold your hand. You need to really latch on to people. So be proactive, go up to them, be there, you know, show up, things like that. It's really important and it gets you further than you think. It's a bit uncomfortable, but we'll talk about this in the mindset section but it's really important that you guys do that, okay? The next thing that I think is quite important is make sure you ask questions. Being in hospital placement is a lot of time out of your day, right? Sometimes you're there for the full day, sometimes you're there for a half day, but it's a lot of time that you could be spending realistically studying or just doing any other thing that is important to you in your life. So being in hospital placement, you should treat it as a revision space, a revision space where you're revising your history taking skills, where you're revising your clinical skills, where you're revising taking bloods and anything else within clinical medicine and procedures and stuff like that. But also treat it as a place where you can revise and brush up on certain knowledge that you're struggling with. The way you can do this is by asking questions to doctors. My sort of rule that I have is if I have a question in mind, I will ask it. At the end of the day, I'm paying for this degree. I'm paying to be here. So if I have a question, I will ask it. If somebody is a consultant in respiratory medicine, and if I have a respiratory question, I will ask them. They will probably know the answer. And, and so that in turn saves me time and prevents me from using up my now limited time at home for revision to look up that small question I had. I'm just gonna ask the doctor that knows the answer off the top of their head already. And also it means that for my memory, it helps me as well because I can associate a question and an answer to a person in a time and place, which is quite uh, useful for memory retention. And then the last thing that I'm going to say is to make sure that when you're in hospital placement, you do more than what is required every week. So usually, I don't know how it works in other med schools, but usually every week you have certain things that you need to get done. And if you only get those stuff done every week, like you just do what is required for week one on week one and then week two, it means that you're not allowing yourself for any freedom and leeway. So let's say you only do what's required for week one and week two, and then on week three you get ill and you are off for two weeks. That means that you have no leeway. You literally have to run around like a headless chicken for the fifth week and trying to get all your sign-offs done. Whereas if you try to front load everything, in the first two or three weeks, it means that you then reach the end of the placement with much more ease and you can just take things a little bit easier and a little bit chiller. So that means that maybe by the end of the placement, you'll be like, hey, like I don't really need to go in tomorrow morning or tomorrow at all. So then you can take a day off. You know, holidays as well in med school when you start clinical placements get much more rare. And using this technique of doing a little bit more work in the first few weeks and then taking a bit more slowly, kind of tricks my brain that I'm like on a bit more of a holiday. Obviously I'm not, I'm still working, but it's a bit more relaxed and chill and it allows me to rest and recharge my batteries even though I don't have proper formal holidays, if that makes sense. So this section is over and now let's move on to the third section, which is what mindset should you have during your placement so you can get the most out of it. The first one that I think is super duper important and it's something that I literally repeat to myself almost every day when I'm on placement, you are allowed to be here. Sometimes you get into a ward and everybody's super busy and all the junior doctors are like in a corner and talk, talking to each other and then there's other doctors here and you just feel like you're a little piece out of the puzzle and you're like, I really want to ask this question and I really need to get this done. But you feel like, you know, it's just simpler to leave. It's just simpler to go home or leave the ward because this is a bit uncomfortable and you feel like you're a piece of the puzzle that shouldn't be there and you're, you're disturbing people. No, you're not. And even if you are, that's fine. You're allowed to be there. You're paying to be here. You know what I mean? You're allowed to be there. And I every time I get an award and I get a bit stressed and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should just go home. Like, there's no point. I'm not going to get anything out of done. I feel stressed of asking this question to this doctor. I don't know them. I repeat to myself a few times, I'm allowed to be here. I'm allowed to be here. I'm allowed to be here. And then I calm down and then I go up to the doctor and I'm like, hi, like, my name is so-and-so. Is it possible to do this? Even though I might be shivering and like a bit uncomfortable on the inside, I'm still remind myself that I need to also get done what I need to get done in this place. And it's not because doctors are busy around me. 
that I should not interrupt them, obviously, you know, be sensible, don't interrupt them like in the middle of like a big thing. But like if they're on the computer and they seem like not that busy, interrupt them nicely and be like, hey, I'm this, can you help me with this? And most often than not, they will. But you need to really remind yourself that you're allowed to be here. You need to make your space and sometimes you need to force it a little bit. You need to be a bit more pushy with people. The second thing that I think I would say in this mindset section is to have the mindset that you should take all the opportunities when they come. Opportunities don't come every day and it's important that if there is an opportunity to take bloods, don't chicken out of it. You know, you're going to have to take bloods at some point. And so even though you might be scared and shivering and like, you know, like, oh my god, I'm going to take bloods for the first time. Imagine I fail. Imagine like I hurt the patient. You're going to have to do it at some point. So just take the plunge. You can practice all you want on fake arms. It's not the same on a real person. So if there's an opportunity, take it. Nothing wrong will happen. Somebody will be there to supervise you. Somebody will be there to help you and walk you through the steps again. So whenever there's opportunities, take them. Even though it's scary, the more you do something, the less scary it becomes. So whenever there's an opportunity, just be like, you know what? My rule is when opportunities come my way, I take them and I appreciate them. So just come in with that like, okay, I know I'm stressed about this, but this is an opportunity. This is a good thing. It's going to help me develop my skills. So take them, you know, do the bloods, do the cannula, put the oxygen on the patient, whatever it is, just take the opportunities. The third thing in this mindset section is to come in with the mindset, come in with the headspace that not every day will be the same and not every placement will be the same. And that's okay. So some days you're going to go in and you're going to get so much done. You're going to feel like you're basically a baby doctor and other days you're going to go in and there's nothing to do or doctors are too busy, or people feel like they're ignoring you because they have so much to do. Days are so different, and that's okay. You know what I mean? And that's why you need to take the opportunities when they arise. And also, different placements will also be different. You're going to have great placements with a great team that are always willing to teach you and always willing to take, you know, to, to hold your hand and help you with things. And then you're going to have teams that are going to be, where you're going to have to be much more proactive, much more pushy to get things out of them. And they're not really going to want to teach you as naturally and organically as other people. And that's fine. And I think going in with the mindset that things will fluctuate helps you manage your expectations and helps you, you know, come back from a bad day or a bad placement or not as good placement, I should say, knowing that it's normal and knowing that it's okay. And that if I'm not in a great placement today, my next placement might be amazing and great. And that's, that, that's just the nature of the job. That's just the nature of being a medical student. Things change teams change, you don't gel with everyone. On that thing as well, if you're on an away placement, so a placement that's not within the city that you live in and it's a bit further away and you have to live in accommodation, find the beauty in it. I was in an away placement for my first one. It's difficult obviously because you live far away, you don't sleep in your own bed, you feel completely like your roots just don't exist anymore. You feel like, you know, you're living halfway here, halfway there, nowhere. But there's positive things. Oftentimes smaller hospitals have better teaching better opportunities for a student to like learn that the teams are oftentimes really good. At least that was my experience. And so I think approaching everything with a mindset that, hey, even though it's difficult, even though there's something a bit challenging, there's always going to be something good out of it. So on an away placement, yeah, it's far away. Yeah, it's annoying. But oftentimes the teaching is better. Or if you're working with a team that's not very willing to teach you. Yeah, that sucks. That's annoying. But maybe it's going to teach you to be more independent and learn a bit more on your own. So if there's a team that's not willing to teach you, maybe you can look through the notes on your own, look on the internet what things mean. And then you realize that actually you don't really need them that much and you don't need to be handheld as much on your next placement. In every situation that's a bit hard, you're going to have something positive out of it, if that makes sense. And yeah, I think I came, in, I came to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This was just kind of a beginner's guide to hospital placement with things that I've learned during my first placement. Let me know any other topics that you would like me to cover um, on clinical medicine because obviously now I'm a clinical medical student. And yeah, if you did enjoy it, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and share this video with other people, other medical students that could benefit from it as well. And yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go um, and I'm going to see you guys next week. Bye guys!